When the whole family comes together to watch the game, nobody wants to miss a second of the action to run to the grocery store. With Instacart, you can get all your weekly groceries in as fast as an hour. Less time shopping means more game time. Let's go. Visit instacart.com to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply. So I'm a father of one. I got to find a babysitter. I found care.com and I was blown away. Through the platform, I was able to find local and experienced candidates along with their reviews and rates, which were way more affordable than I anticipated. Care.com really put me at ease knowing that they were all required to go through a background check. If you're like me and you need to find someone reliable for your child care necessities, check out care.com. Find the ideal sitters for your child care needs. This is Kansas State's Felix Enidike Uzama, and you're listening to the PowerCat Podcast on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Make sure you're subscribing to this show on your favorite podcast provider. Welcome to another edition of the PowerCat Questions Podcast. It is a big week for Kansas State sports, in case you didn't know. I'm Tim Fitzgerald, Zach Carlson, and Cole Carmody here. Ryan Gilbert's off doing important things with his life. It's not the intro we agreed on. I'm not doing that intro because we're not going to talk about that other sport on this podcast today. There's a big game on Saturday. There's a big game on Saturday. And I think the U.S. can be Netherlands. (sighs) David Gasson would not be a happy man. Oh, good point. We should have asked him yesterday. I almost asked him. We should have asked him, hey, Netherlands might play the U.S. on Saturday. Who you got? You might have to transfer. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He speaks such good English. It's kind of wild. You would never. I, I actually thought he was going to have a little thicker accent. Why well, he does not really he doesn't, at all. He doesn't, no, he doesn't sound Dutch, and I only base that off of me listening to Max Verstappen speak. So, okay, yeah. we're going to talk about football now. <laughs> uh, now that we've covered soccer and Formula One, uh, but we are the Power Cat Podcast. We do cover Kansas State. This is how it works. Everyone can listen to this podcast, and everyone should, even if you're not a college football fan. I think you'll find it fulfilling for your life, and then the users, our VIPs, which have grown dramatically in the last week, get to ask the questions at Wabash Station, and we welcome all of our new subscribers at GoPowerCat as we continue to grow. You still got 50% off, too. That's right. If you are not a subscriber or you're a monthly subscriber, this is an upgradable offer right now at GoPowerCat, 50% off a subscription. So go take care of that. Wow, it's a big week. In case you didn't know what we're going to talk about, Kansas State TCU, 11 a.m. Saturday, AT&T Stadium, Arlington, Texas, Big 12 Championship. That's the podcast. We'll talk to you next week. Now we we get some great questions from Wabash Station. But first, we're sponsored by the Fridge Wholesale Liquor. If you're getting ready for a road trip, hypothetically speaking, maybe driving to Arlington, Texas. Very random place. Yeah, and you need some refreshments for your room. Don't spend your money in Texas. Don't do it, man. Do it at the fridge. But just make sure you don't stay at a hotel in in uh, in, t- in, Tol- in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That will not be named because yeah. you won't be able to take it into your room. The Hard Rock. Okay, here we go. I named it the Hard Rock. Don't stay at the Hard Rock and expect to be able to take your own alcohol into your own room that you paid for. Still bitter, very bitter. Hey, you got to put it in a bag. <laughs> you can't just whip it out. It wasn't a bag. Whoa! It wasn't a bag in the. <laughs> <laughs> That's just good advice, Zach. <laughs> and and the, the valet guy just got belligerent. What's in your bag? And just uh, alcohol? What What do you care? He goes, you can't have that. I'm like, well, yeah, I can. I'm taking it in my room. It, was, it almost got ugly because he was a dick. Anyhow, let's get back to the podcast and talk about K-State football and the importance of this week. And by the way, a little little insider information here. If you're if you have tickets to the Wichita State game on Saturday night in basketball, but you go into Arlington, please do everything you can to get those tickets in the hands of a K-Stater. And um, if you're able to go to the Wichita State game on Saturday night at the Octagon of Doom, let's say a certain team wins a Big 12 championship. Yeah, you know, they they actually win the game in Arlington and then they fly home after the game and the band's usually there to wait for them, but the band will be busy 
because they'll be at the game, I imagine. Mm-hmm. And then there'll be a pep band at the basketball game. So what the heck? I think they might. I'm not sure. They might just have a pep rally at halftime of the basketball so game. Are they going to leave a pep band behind? Surely they will. I yeah, I don't know. They, I mean, those people in they the pep band not. are in the marching band, and they'll probably do a full marching show yeah. for halftime. And pre- so what you're saying is it's all going to be up to the DJ inside of the It could be. College. It really could it, be. A lot of pressure on him. And if he chooses to do so, Ryan Gilbert and his kazoo just playing out the Wabash Cannonball. He'll be so lonely. Ryan Gilbert is the designated survivor. He is. Ryan Gilbert's so invested in covering Kansas State basketball for you, and I'm not making this up. I asked him if he wanted to go to the Big 12 Championship or the Sugar Bowl, which we'll get into that, and he said, no, I want to cover basketball. There you go. There you go. Marquise Noel's favorite reporter. Favorite reporter. Do we have any questions about basketball in this podcast? Absolutely not. Okay. Nobody. The first question. It does come from the coach. Yeah. Am I allowed to read it now? Yeah, go ahead. The first question goes from... That, that's a weird question. Go ahead. The first, the first question comes from Jerome Yang. So, uh, Coach Sutton, we know it's you. Which is more important to the program, a conference championship or a Sugar Bowl win? I'd say the Sugar Bowl since we've never done that. But I'm also thinking about 2020 Iowa State here. Has their Fiesta Bowl win amounted to anything for them? No, I think it's a conference championship. And honestly, I mean, because if you go to the Sugar Bowl and lose to Alabama... That you just fulfilled everyone's expectations. Well, who did Iowa State beat in the Fiesta Bowl? Boise State. It was. I'm pretty sure it was a G5 team. I'm pretty sure it was. Has to be Boise well, State, right? The bottom line is, if it would have been over Alabama, we would have remembered that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll just say this: this was today's daily delivery on Tuesday. Both are important. I mean, bo- I think both are equally important. If you can win both, you absolutely skyrocket your. You're standing as a program. People around the nation will go, oh, okay. Yeah, K-State's back. It wasn't just Bill Snyder. And I, that's a big hurdle to clear for the perception of the the football program and the school. That what Coach Snyder did was nothing short of a miracle. It should always be honored in the history of college football as the greatest turnaround ever because it is. it is. There's, if you know everything behind it, it is. So having Chris Kleiman come in and replicate similar success would be a remarkable story. Iowa State beat Oregon that year. Oh. Oregon right. was a four and two because they had a shortened Pac twelve season and they were four and two and they finished the year four and three and Iowa State beat them. Yeah, so I don't know if that really counts, but Yeah, well I think the whole I think we don't remember because nobody really cared about the pandemic season. Yeah, I mean I think I'm with you. I think that a conference championship is always the most important thing. What do those guys talk about before the season? We want to win the Big Twelve? To me, That is more important. And it kind of goes back to the conversations we had with the bowl game last year. You know, we talked about what's more important, beating LSU or winning the Texas Bowl. I still maintain that winning the Texas Bowl was probably a little bit more important than who you actually beat. But I think that conversation might get flipped if you do play a powerhouse SEC program in the Sugar Bowl. But, I mean, first things first, got to take care of business. And I think a conference championship win would be significant, especially because you can kind of afford yourself to lose a sugar bowl because you still know that you won the conference championship. Right. I think, you know, <clears throat> if, if, if you had to choose one and you can guarantee yourself one or the other, I would take the win over Alabama in the sugar bowl just because it's the sugar bowl. It's a national thing. You know, it's a huge storyline. If K-State beats Alabama, that's significant. You've arrived at that point but also i think that the big 12 championship is more important to the program because year in year out you can say hey we're competing for big 12 championship which by the way we won gets us to the sugar bowl yeah so you know the way that they're getting to the sugar bowl this year you know it's kind of you know if they lose and they're still in the sugar bowl i mean it just feels kind of you know not like it was necessarily on merit you know they're just they're filling a slot at that point but You know, it says a lot about the conference that TCU went undefeated, ran the table, beat K-State twice, and is in the college football playoff. You know, and I think that that's, you know, on the other hand, I think that that's good for the conference, too, even if K-State loses. And that's Mm -hmm. good. You know, having a Big 12 team in the college football playoff is good for Kansas State. But Will they get in? Will they get in no matter what? Is that in the Okay, this was a question I just fielded on KFH before I did a segment out of Wichita with my friend Bob Lutz and... This was it, it's an interesting question. Um, I personally think this is what's everything wrong with college football right now. If you strip away all the identity about who's on this resume, 
If you do the blind resume trick, TCU should be ranked number one in the college football playoff. But they're not because they're the lesser brand, and Georgia's an established. I, I get why Georgia's number one. But the fact that if TCU loses the Big 12 championship, they would be perceived as automatically out. Even if it's 31-30 K-State wins at the at right at, you know, kicks a field goal just like TCU beat Baylor, they'd be out. I have no doubt they're not getting in. But if that resume, the exact resume, belonged to Oklahoma and they lost on a field goal, they're in. And why do I say that? Well, let's go back to 2003 when K-State kicked the living crap out of Oklahoma that then got to play for the national title. There's different rules for different programs, and it's complete BS, and it's got to stop. And I hope someone can take the reins of this and say, you know what? This is we've got to start looking at these based on accomplishment, not brand. ESPN, sit down and shut up. You're not part of the selection process. You shouldn't be. This that is that questions the integrity of the game when you let TV executives start picking who they want in. No. Get out of the process totally. You get to sit over there and televise the games. That's your role here. So I Uh, No, I don't think they're in. Should they be in if it's a competitive game? Hell yes, I think they should be in. I think they proved that all year long. And anyone who does an actual honest evaluation of the teams in the top four or five, TCU's got the best resume. They've beaten the most ranked teams. They've proven over and over, but they start slow. They win the games. It, nobody's nobody's checking the halftime record. What were you? What's your record at halftime? I've never heard of that. That ever brought up until ESPN decided to bring it up against TCU. Just stupid. The prob the problem is it's going to come down to if if things go like we think it'll be Ohio State or TCU. If K State beats TCU, it'll be Ohio State or TCU. And are you going to take a loss on a neutral site against a top ten team in K State? Who's the Who's the extra team then? Because the 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 most previous top four was Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, TCU, USC, USC. If USC, they win, they're in. Yeah, so if they th- win, they're this in. This is the thing: is we have an opportunity here to establish an actual playoff with an SEC champion, a Big Ten champion, a Big Twelve champion, and a Pac twelve champion. If everything goes as planned on on this day, but the fact that. TCU might lose its spot in the playoff because Ohio State wasn't good enough to play in a championship game is crap. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be rewarded for not making it to their conference championship. And let's not forget, they didn't lose a hard-fought game on the road. They got their ass kicked at home in the final regular season game. That is more than one loss in my book. And it should be remembered as that. But it's not. Because if that had been Purdue that was unbeaten and lost at home to Michigan in the last game of the season, Purdue would be out without a question. It's all about Ohio State. Stop this. Make it stop. But is USC, is USC the only other one-loss team? Is a yeah. one-loss TCU team in before Alabama? Yes. So it's it's a lot closer it would the, be Ohio the, State or TCU, right? But also, if I don't, I wouldn't say that USC beating Utah is a shoe in at this point. Either. It is not, and I don't think so. They would. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying TCU losing this game, they might need some help, but it's not unreasonable help for mm-hmm. them to get it. Yep. So I don't think that TCU is completely done. And hey, maybe the committee listens to this podcast and says, you know what, Fitz is right. Hi, Gene. How you doing, Gene? Next question comes from Chris66204. For the rematch against TCU, what has changed about TCU and K-State that will lead to a different outcome than in Fort Worth? Will Howard is an obvious difference, but does anything else come to mind? Well, I think the defense is more secure in who they are. They've, they've struggled a little bit now as they are adjusting to some loss at safety. But I think we saw in the second half against KU, they, they started to settle in. V.J. Payne started to play pretty good football for a true freshman. Um yeah, I, I just think this team's put together better, more confident. Now, let's recall this TCU game. I mean, they went in, they lose their quarterback, they thrust Will Howard in, we're all stunned, and we were stunned by the, his level of play. I asked him today, I mean, looking back, did, 
did it kind of strike you that I'm out here and I'm dealing, I'm playing? And he goes, yeah, it did, it did. And then they kind of lost their way. So we want to talk about Will Howard getting better. We want to talk about the defense getting better. You know who else has gotten better? Colin Klein. Mm -hmm. He came off the gas. We all saw it. It happened. That last drive of the first half, K-State didn't go full throttle through the halftime buzzer, and he took it casual. TCU got the ball and scored, got the ball to start the second half and scored, and really the momentum's totally gone at that point. I think Colin slipped into just 10 years ago, you could sit on a lead. You, you can't sit on a lead that is less than three touchdowns in the first half anymore. You just can't. Teams will come back on you because the offenses are so advanced and the pace of the game is picked up. There's more possessions. Colin Klein's a much better play caller and game manager than he was at that point in the season. And I think that's the biggest change with this team. He seems to understand what he can do with Will Howard and how that impacts the weapons he has. And he's calling great games offensively. And and the pacing, the tempo, all of it is really good right now and so much better than it was back then. And... Honestly, the team's healthier. Uh, you know, granted, they've got a couple losses at safety, but let's remember that team got the living crap beat out of it at TCU. And it was incredibly physical and just some freak injuries. I mean, Ben Sennett injures an elbow. Daniel Green had his abdominal or hip issue or whatever it was. Um, it's just on and on. Josh Hayes got hurt. I, I mean, I can't remember. There was, it was, I've never seen anything like it. So if they can stay healthy and Maybe TCU goes through a similar thing. Max Duggan has survived the season as a tough son of a you-know-what. But, you know, things happen in football. And, you know, in, in, in preparing this week, I have I wandered over to a TCU fan board uh, to see what it looked like. I've never seen a fan base root for injuring other quarterbacks. Mm. Like, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And and look, I, I know K-State injured two quarterbacks at Kansas last year, and it was a notable story. But – celebrating and intending to injure people is not the game of football. I don't know what's happened to TCU fans, but that was that's awful. When when you see fans, and yeah, we're going to take a Will Howard like we did in the first game. Wow, that's not what football's about, but congratulations. So I have some film pulled up right here, and I'm just going to tell you and read to you, read to you who is on the field. Uh, the score right now is 28-38. TCU is beating K-State. There's five minutes left to go in the game. Okay. It's second and nine. Just a random play I picked out from the second half of that game. Your defense alignment are Brendan Mott, D. Hentz, and Jalen Pickle, which was a lot of that rotation throughout the game because Felix and Nate Matlack were both extremely dinged up. Okay. Um, your cornerbacks are Jacob Parrish and Echo Boydo. Your linebackers are Desmond Purnell, Nick Allen, and Gavin Forche. In the secondary, you have V.J. Payne, Sincere Mason, and Josh Hayes. Incredible. That is when K-State is down by two scores with five minutes left to go in the game. They're technically still in it, but that is the defense that is out there trying to stop that TCU offense. I love all those guys, but that team wouldn't even stop South Dakota. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, the, that's the answer. I mean, that has to be the answer. That's the, that's the biggest difference. They did in the second half. They did. They did. They held them out of the end zone. That's the biggest difference to me, and I, I don't even think it's even close, to be honest. And, and I'll say this. You know what? I think another big difference is the fact that this game is being played in Arlington and not in Fort Worth. I'm sorry, but when you have beer cans and shoes being thrown at you from the sideline, I mean, you can't tell me that there's not some type of advantage that TCU had from how rowdy that student section was. It's not going to be like that against Ar in Arlington. I understand that it's 30 minutes away from, from Fort Worth um, where they play, but there's going to be a lot of K-State people down there, and I think it's going to be truly more of a neutral site than it was in Fort Worth. So, I mean, I think if you, you factor in that, yes, K-State has had some injuries on defense, but this defense is 20 times better than the defense that played the second half against the Frogs the first time. Yep. I agree. Well, no. Yeah. Sorry. The microphone agrees, too. I know. Uh, next question comes from CFID. How devastating is not having Mason or Savage at safety for TCU? I, I don't think it's devastating, but it hurts. I mean, Kobe Savage was playing really, really good football. And I don't mean to disregard sincere Mason's injury, but that's the one that hurts. But put together, yeah, I mean... You you had tremendous depth at safety. Let's go back to the start of the season. Safety was our concern. K 
because we didn't know Kobe Savage would be this good. Mm -hmm. We didn't know the other transfers would be that effective. We didn't know Josh Hayes was going to switch to safety and play at an all-Big 12 level. So they turned that into a team strength with really good depth, and now they've carved out that depth. And they're relying on a true freshman in V.J. Payne, T.J. Smith, is just got to play better. He's got all the tools, but he seems to forget his assignments too often. It's, it's very frustrating to watch. They need him at a higher level. They've turned to Max Marsh and some other young guys, you know, that guys that haven't played a lot of football, to try to be out there because they will do the right thing. And athletically, that can be costly. So we'll see. It's better to have Daniel Green back for this game than... Uh, if the rules were reversed, right? If you had Kobe Savage, if you had Sincere Mason, but you didn't have Daniel Green like you had against TCU the first time, I think you'd rather have Daniel Green and Austin Moore in the middle than having both of those guys. Now, that's not necessarily because VJ Payne is a better backup than Daniel Green's backups are, but I think it's because of how valuable that 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 having Daniel Green is in the middle for this defense, controlling uh, the communication and and honestly stopping Kendra Miller. Uh, I'll be honest, guys. I, I don't have any concerns. I think Julius Brintz wants revenge against Quentin Johnston. If there is one thing that that man wants, it's to be able to go up against him, prove himself that he is an NFL cornerback, and to say, you know what? The only reason that I didn't play a good game was because I blew both my hamstrings at, on the same play. Julius Brintz is going to come to play. I'm not worried, quite honestly, about the secondary because I think these cornerbacks are going to take their game to the next level against these receivers. So having Daniel Green in the middle, having Austin Moore in the middle to stop uh, to stop the rushing attack, to me, that is extremely important. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that it's not devastating to not have Kobe and Sincere, but I think you can make up for it on the back end with those cornerbacks. I still think losing Kobe Savage is probably worth a touchdown. I think, be. Yeah. I, I think that this game, you know, if the first game was a 10 point game, I think that, you know, it might be a 17 point game. I don't want to say that K State's going to get blown out, but at the same time, I think that that hole in the secondary, um, you know, that, that Savage leaves is, is pretty big. So I think that, you know, if, that, yeah, it's, it's devastating in my opinion. I don't think that. K State on this stage is, you know, with these young guys, they may have played well against KU, but I don't know if they are ready at this point to step up and win a Big 12 championship. No, I would agree. It's they don't have much room for error. This TCU team is really good. But I've made this correlation before. This kind of reminds me of 98. They have a lot to lose and can be very tight in this game. Yep. Last question of the first half comes from KSU number one. This question is for Fitz. I guess we're not old enough to answer this question. Uh, Of all the Big 12 championship games we have played in, where does this one rank amongst its peers in importance for the program? I think it's second. I mean, ironically, the one they won. um, And, of course, there wasn't a championship game in 2012. And that that kind of – I don't mean – this sounds horrible. It sounds worse than I mean it. It kind of devalues it a little bit. It was, you know, one last step. You won on the field um, during the regular season, which. Although if they would have had. Which I just brought up the earlier championship today. Game, they're probably in the playoffs. Yeah. You know, if I brought this up it. earlier today. When they go to 12 teams, I think these conferences, if they weren't greedy sons of a, again, should look at getting rid of championship games. Let's just take this year. TCU and K-State play. And there's a 12-team playoff on the horizon. TCU beats K-State. They don't just beat K-State. They knock them out of the playoff. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I I think you need to stop and think about what's best for your conference or maybe just declaring a champion like in basketball. You know, this is our regular season champion. Boom. Use the tiebreakers if you have to. Declare a champion unlike what they did when TCU and Baylor tied. But it gets tough when you don't do a round robin. I agree. It makes sense. It makes sense when you can tiebreak it out easy. What's the tiebreaker? Head to head. All right. Well, there you go. And I, and I would also make this argument too, though, if for for your counterpoint for you, Fitz. If K State were to win this game, and there's a 12 team playoff, now you're hosting a playoff game. Yeah. So right. There is a lot at stake. And uh, but I go back to '98. Kansas State had the best team in the nation. Again, they were fighting the brand value thing, and they they were kind of down the poles a little bit. UCLA's up there. Miami's up there. Tennessee's up there. But by the second half of that game, they knew they were going to play in the 
championship game, the national championship game, if they win, and that's really what happened. I mean, the distraction of that going up on the boards and inside the stadium was awful. But if Kansas State wins a national championship in 98, because I have no doubt they, they just absolutely trashed Tennessee in that title game. Um, uh, where are we now? What What is this program about now? Um, and in a weird way, the 2003 game was destructive for Kansas State football because they ended up winning. They ended up getting the big stage at the Fiesta Bowl against the big opponent. And then they had what happened at the Fiesta Bowl. And it, for the most part, shut down K-State football recruiting because of the distraction of what happened. And what followed was 04 and 05. The opposite of what you would think winning a conference title should do. But it it was such a painful incident for Bill Snyder and the program that it didn't recover. That led to Ron Prince. That led to the rebuild under Bill Snyder. So it, in a weird way, that one they won in 2003 wasn't a good thing for the program. It's very odd to say that. Um, it was remarkable what they did. How they did it was emphatic. It was incredible how they did to Oklahoma that season. But, yeah, 98 was the most important, and this could be there too because as we enter a new era of college football, not just with the new Big 12, but with that 12-team playoff on the horizon, now the world of college football has to expand its thinking beyond four who are the four? Who are the two? Who are the four? And now we're talking 12. Now we're talking a champion, you're in. And if you're a really good team like Kansas State is right now, you're in. Because K-State would be in if they win the playoff, not win the championship game naturally because they're a conference champion. But even if that wasn't there, they will be in the top 12. So I, I'm, I'm very curious. I'm very curious to see what this means for the program. I agree with you, Fitz, because... Like you said, this is ushering in a new era, this 12-team playoff era. You go back to that 98 game, you're going into the BCS. You know, the BCS is brand new at that time. You have the opportunity to establish, your, establish yourself in this kind of new world of postseason football. Granted, it was a lot more similar to the Bull Alliance than what the college football playoff is and will be in the future. But it was a turning point, so to speak, in the college football world. And I think we're about to see that right now. And especially if K-State plays Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. Because you go to that, and we'll get into you know importance of Sugar Bowl and whatever bowl game K-State goes to later in this podcast. But if you win this Big 12 championship, you know it sets the stage. You're going to the new Big 12, an expanded college football playoff. You become the benchmark, potentially, for this conference going into the future. You know, five out of six teams in the last three conference championship games, they're still going to be in the Big 12. OU's the only one, and they haven't been in for two years. It will have been at least three years of football games, or potentially three years of, of football games without OU in a championship game come next Big 12 football season on their way out. So, you know, this is huge for K-State, especially for what it means for the conference. And... I would still I'm, – I'm with Fitz 100%. It's the number two most important game, in my opinion. Okay. That's it for the first half of the Powercat Questions podcast. We got more. We got a lot more. Stick with us and make sure you stop at the fridge whenever you can. Just say hi. Just be friendly to them. They're good people. This is Kansas State's Cooper Beebe. The leaders in K-State sports coverage will be right back with more of the Powercat podcast. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562 314 4603 for complete details. JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab-created or earth-created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict-free stones. Then, you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real-time diamond consultations available, where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. 
This is Kansas State's Daniel Green, and welcome back to the Powercat Podcast on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Welcome back to the Powercat Questions Podcast, your weekly journey into Kansas State sports. Our subscribers at GoPowerCat.com ask the questions. Everyone gets to listen. We're sponsored by the Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Please support the Fridge whenever you're in town. Please, they've been so good to us with the support of this podcast. They're just wonderful people. Great selection, great prices, and knowledgeable service there. If you've got wine questions, champagne questions, bourbon questions, vodka questions, questions about the meaning of life, Kevin will have to handle that one, but they've got someone there that can handle it all for you. Stop in the fridge at the corner of this and that in the town in which we live. And if you want to ask questions, you can sign up for 50% off. Oh, if you want to ask questions on this podcast, just go sign up 50% off. And if you're a monthly subscriber, why live month to month when you can make a full-time commitment to us? And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel too. Thank you, Cole Carmody. Here we go. Your questions from Wild Bass Station. The first question of the second half comes from It's Aim BB. Do I say that right? I, feel I like think so. He, he'll probably tell us we're wrong, but I think that <laughs> the, we got it wrong for so many times that he just doesn't care anymore. Okay. We're sorry. First question from A.A. Ron. Um, <laughs> the, the, it Dan BB says, your championship game score prediction, please. Mm, that's not, this isn't the appropriate time. I do that in my five keys to victory, and I haven't figured that out yet. Okay. Well, I'm not going to Don't get, get score. ahead of the stuff. We've got a schedule here. I have to come up with a score here in about, I don't know, an hour. So I'm not, I don't know yet, but I am going to pick K-State to win. Hmm. Oh, crap. Okay. TCU 42, K-State 34, hmm. which goes completely against what I said about <laughs> yeah, the safeties. But I feel like it's going to be more shootout than... Not. Yeah, I do think there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. The over. That is my score prediction. Yeah. The over. I don't think that TCU's defense is going to be able to stop K-State's offense. They're just really rolling right now. And, again, I, I said I, I came on this podcast last week and I said, well, Howard's going to throw for four touchdowns. Well, I would have been right if they would have flipped the ball to Malik instead of handing it to him. But that's beside the point. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel, but as soon as K-State won, I had a bad feeling about this game. But the more this week rolls on, I have a feeling I, I think it's going to be a lot closer than people expect. I mean, I guess people expect it to be a close game. The spread's two and a half in Vegas. It's going to be like that one way or the other. It's going to come down to who, honestly, who 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 has the ball at the end of the game, I have a feeling, is, is what it's going to come down to. I think that these two teams are so similar. TCU has gotten the benefit of the doubt more this year than K-State. But again, I talked about it before. This could easily be K-State and TCU's position. I mean, it really could have been this season. Um, so you just have to, to roll with the punches. But I think K-State has a great chance to win this game. I really do. I would agree. Okay. Next question comes from Ema in Iowa, a.k.a. Ema in heaven. Iowa, heaven, it's the same thing. Uh, no, I think no. Okay, never mind. Is there any advantage to K-State having played Stanford at AT&T Stadium last year, possibly with routines and ingesting to the environment? Did you say ingesting? What did I say? I said adjusting. It's adjusting. I'm... Ingesting. We'd have to rewind. But... No, like one of those uh, reviews. VAR? Yeah. You have to do a little hand signal? Yeah. Uh, all the okay, so look, we discussed this before the podcast started. I don't think when the game started it matters. When Once it starts, it doesn't matter. But just the whole going to the stadium, going in this door, here's your locker room. They'll probably be in a different locker room because they were home for Stanford and visit this game. But the whole routine, the walkthrough, you won't be as in awe. So I think there is something to it. I do. But I don't think it's that big a deal. I wonder how many kids on this roster have played games there before. Because how many of these kids are from Texas? There's a lot of them. There might be some freshmen on the team that weren't on the team last year that they've already played a game there so or even transfers and that kind of stuff so yeah i mean um i do think it's an advantage though guys i really do i mean chris Kleiman talked about it and you're right fitz but i think the biggest thing is going to be they're not going to be in awe because there is going to be a lot of guys from kansas who you know let's face it you look at a guy like hayden gillum hayden gillum was on the trip he didn't play last year but if when he runs out of that tunnel for the first time and he was if, if he would have played last year, I guarantee you there'd be some guys on this team had they not played that have been like, okay, this is a little bit different than Bo Snyder Family Stadium, right? There it is a huge difference. And if you've never been and you're planning on going, first of all, you're gonna be shocked because this is a it's an out of body experience when you go to the stadium and it's filled up to the brim. Um, 
But I, I do. I don't know if it's an advantage for K State over TCU because you want to talk about guys that have probably played multiple games at this stadium. It's people on TCU. It's those kids who have played high school football in Texas at a very high level. There's a lot of those kids on TCU, and a lot of those kids have played at Jerry World before. But yeah, I think I think it's important. Yeah, I, I think it has a role. But look, once the game starts, I mean. Eli Huggins isn't going to be wrestling a center or guard thinking, I've played here before. It's, yeah. it's, it doesn't yeah. matter. I think once yeah, once you're out on the field, it doesn't matter. But also, if you're a football player and you've been in tunnels in different stadiums and you've been in visiting locker rooms in different stadiums, it's not much different than any other stadium. I think K-State can beat them in Texas and they can beat them in Africa too. Yeah, Michael Beasley makes a, an appearance here on the Go Powercat, Powercat questions podcast. That's fantastic. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right, next question comes from Cheeto19. I think Mike would like those Cheetos. That is their the third post, by the way. Cheeto19? Cheeto what do you guys think of Cheetos? All I'm, I'm thinking, a fan. I like Cheetos. All I'm thinking about is that David Beckham Peyton Manning commercial where Chicharito is kicking the penalty and they're eating Cheetos and they call it Cheetos and then he's like, Cheto. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know that commercial. I love All Cheetos. Right. Go ahead. Are Cheetos special. chips? They're, uh, that's a great question, Cole. That's better than hey, pickles. hot dog a pickles. sandwich. Bookmark that for May. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are Cheetos a chip? Okay, let's go on with this question. All right, Cheeto 19. If K-State loses the championship game to TCU, is there a chance Texas will get the Sugar Bowl invitation instead of the Wildcats? The Sugar Bowl is doesn't have a choice. They have to take... Um, there's two ways this has been explained, and people have found two different explanations. They both work in K-State's favor. You either have to pick the highest available conference team in the college football playoff rankings. I don't see any way. We, we don't know as we sit here what those rankings will be. But I think the gap between K-State and Texas will open up. So many teams above K-State lost. They'll drop probably below K-State, some of them, but not below Texas. So I think they'll widen that gap. I just don't see any way... K-State losing a championship game is going to cost them 10 spots in the poll. Did you see what Chris Del Conte tweeted? No. Did you see this, Zach? No. No. So somebody asked him a question on Twitter. Um, this is the former TCU AD who is now the AD at Texas. Correct. Um, I'm going to try and find it word for word. But basically, somebody asked him a question on Twitter. Here he goes. Uh, somebody added him on Twitter and said, any possibility for Texas playing in the Sugar Bowl if TCU defeats KSU next weekend? Lots of speculation out there. They they added him on Twitter, and Chris Del Conte tweeted, no, dot, dot, dot. Okay. And that's the other part of this is um, – Someone has also found an indication the Sugar Bowl is obligated to take the second place team in the final standings of the conference, which is Kansas State. So I, either way, it works to K State's advantage. They can't just pick the brand Texas, um, and that's very interesting that he said that. Folks, K State is going to play in the Sugar Bowl. I, I mean, maybe there's a scenario out there where something happens, but I, I don't know what that is. I have no idea. If they win. They're the Big 12 champion. And I guess I guess a scenario of not playing the Sugar Bowl is they win so emphatically they put them in the playoff. Gene Taylor does the most home-cooked meal yeah. ever and serves it to the nation. Yeah, maybe there's a bunch of chaos on Saturday. All the favorites lose. Yeah, maybe Purdue, they're not jumping that high, beats Michigan, Utah beats USC. Everyone above K-State uh, is forced to vacate their season yeah, immediately. Yeah. Well, that is an interesting question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. man, I mean, maybe there's that chance because according to the folks at 538 that does statistical things, mostly for politics, but they did this, um, Kansas State's the sixth best team in the country right now, according to them. Based on the actual blind resumes, they let the computer sort this out without human interaction, and that's what they ended up with. So I, I think we all kind of miss the fact that K-State's really good, and they've lost to three really good football teams. They don't have a bad loss, and they've thumped some teams pretty convincingly, if that counts. So. The, lurch, the worst loss is Texas. Yeah. Which is insane Which is say. insane. Because that's a really good football team. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're inconsistent, but on that day, they were really good for at least a half. And, yeah, um, I'm, I'll just say this. this. This company has booked all of its flights to New Orleans. And I didn't do that rolling the dice. I'm, I'm very confident 
that that's where they'll end up. I did get refundable airfares. Yeah, so but, confident in refunds. Yeah, we, we have done that, and we have gone ahead and booked our flights to Austin from New Orleans to cover basketball. So we, we're planning on being on the road for a while covering sports. Let me ask you guys this. Please this do. was a question that was posed on Twitter. So this question comes from me or whoever randomly tweeted this. I don't know. Okay. This is, goes along the same lines here. But if you could take away a loss – in K-State's history, three lo- let's say three losses. Which three losses would you take? Because And the next question is, right. would, you, would you potentially take a loss away from this season to try and elevate K-State's stock for the college football playoff, even though they have two losses? Because the, the next question becomes, does a two-loss Kansas State get in to the playoff over anybody else if there is chaos? I don't see that because of the, no, because the brand. Brands, but also... Say you take away the Texas loss because that's the worst one. You still lost to Tulane, and that's kind of a blemish if you have two losses. If it's one loss, maybe it's fair if they win the the AAC, but I think it's just too tough. If you were to just say, "Hey, K State's now a ten and two team going to the Big Twelve Championship," you know, eleven and two if they win the Big Twelve Championship. I just don't know how. You know, aside from creating other scenarios and, you know, yeah. playing with who wins, who loses the Pac-12, SEC, whatever, I just don't see a way that you can make an argument for a two-loss K-State team. Because the answer of, of which losses would you take away would be the 98. Absolutely. Oh, I thought you were talking team. about this year. No, I am. Oh, but, I mean, this oh, it kind of yeah, talks that's about absolutely one of them. And, and 2012 against Baylor, right? I mean, those probably. are the two obvious yeah. answers. And probably if the third one then, based on that context, would be Tulane. Yeah. Because no matter what happened, that was perceived at the time as a bad loss, and it dropped K-State significantly, and it took a while to recover in the standings. It did. Yeah. So they would have been up towards the top. But how much higher is K-State in the rankings if that that they just beat them because they were expected yeah. to beat them? So my, I guess my answer to, to my own question is I don't know. Well, it doesn't they... lift them, but they don't drop. That's the change. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't boost, give them a big boost, but it, <laughs> it's it, it the does because they don't drop. Right. Yeah. They, they hold – Hold sway, and then they can move up higher with uh, what they accomplish later in the season. The and then, then, then you look at TCU and Texas as quality losses, yeah. good teams. The mm-hmm. timing of your losses matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. The last question of the podcast comes from Wildcat Pilot eighty eight. Is the Sugar Bowl the best bowl in K State history, and why does it seem K State is going to the best bowl in school history, but hasn't had the best season in school? It's history? only the best one if they win. I mean, it's on par with the Fiesta Bowl. It's not yeah. lose track of that. It's the same same level. But for us old farts, yeah, it is the best bowl because there used to be four bowls that really counted. And it wasn't the Fiesta Bowl. The Fiesta Bowl is the new kid on the block. Well, what was the fourth bowl then? Cotton. Oh. Cotton, sugar, yeah. orange, and rose right. were the four yeah. bowls. And the Fiesta Bowl has supplanted the cotton in that role. But um, this – I've I, did the daily delivery about it. this is where I've always wanted to see K-State fans did. First of all, it's a cool bowl. It, I like you can talk about the Rose Bowl and the tradition of it. That'd be awesome. I think it's really cool. The teams that aren't in the Pac-12 or Big Ten that have gotten to play there because that's a rare, unique, mm-hmm. cool opportunity for that soon to be de- devalued bowl. Got to watch the daily deliver on that for later in the week. But um <laughs> You know, in the Orange Bowl, it, it, it that was the big tw- big eight bowl, and and yeah, the Casey's never been to that bowl, but you know, that, okay, you know, it, it's kind of aged a little bit too. Like the cotton, not as badly as the cotton, but now they're the bowl that moving gets it, the ACC, moving it to Hard Rock Stadium, wasn't which it's not, it wasn't Hard Rock Stadium at the yeah. time, but. It's, moving it from the Orange. The only bowl thing I think down. of the Orange Bowl is KU, and that automatically devalues the bowl. Yeah, well, it actually devalues K-State's brand because if you weren't aware, KU has won an Orange Bowl and K-State hasn't. I don't know if you've been oh. told that on social media. Yeah. Did right you also – Did I guess I also didn't realize that KU holds the all-time record over K-State in football even though you had to have been born in like 1940-something for KU to have won more games than K-State. I think, it, I think it was even through 1919 that someone – Oh, was it 1919? Yeah. Anyhow, uh, yeah, this is – it would be huge. It's huge for the program. It's huge for the fan base. And, it, and what an opportunity not just to play in the Sugar Bowl now. And thank God – not to get a rematch against LSU because people have been, uh, okay, to get Alabama 
whether they're depleted or down or whatever, you still get Alabama. And in this world, again, in which people are obsessed with these football brands, it is the biggest brand of all. And if you can win a Big 12 championship and roll into New Orleans and beat Alabama on that stage, it's huge. That's the greatest season in K-State history. It's huge. It's huge for the future of the program, for recruiting, for when, when they call up kids, they'll know. They'll know something's going on. And when they talk to the players on this team, they'll find out this isn't just about football. It literally is about a group of players and coaches that are more bonded than any I've ever seen before. So it, it's enormous, enormous. Plus, it's going to be damn fun. You will be in New Orleans for New Year's Eve, hopefully following a K-State victory because that game does kick at 11 a.m. Just drag Fitz out of his hotel room on New Year's Eve. Weekend at Bernie's, my ass, <laughs> to a bar, prop me up, put sunglasses on, and give me a drink. I might be exhausted, but it's time to party if K-State wins. Honestly, if K-State loses, I may not have it in me to go out. I don't want anything to do with Bourbon Street on New Year's Eve. Um, uh, we are exploring other options. We will see. But we will be there starting the 26th. We get in the 26th, right? And then uh, press conferences start the 27th. So but let's not get it. ahead of ourselves. There is a big game on Saturday. Well, we'll, that was the question I am answering. We will be in Qatar. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. We will uh, we'll be in Arlington early Friday. So, by the way, keep an eye out at Wabash Station and Twitter. We might have a spontaneous get-together on Friday. But I'm going to tell you right now, my old ass ain't getting drunk, and it ain't staying out late with an 11 a.m. kick. Why? Because I suck. But K-State football doesn't. And I hope this podcast didn't. We appreciate you listening. What what was that? What was that? Okay. Uh, Make sure you stop at the fridge. We should stop at the fridge on the way out of town and pick up some some refreshments for after the game. Because it's 11 a.m. game. Maybe we'll do that. Thank you for listening to the Power Cat Podcast. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Power Cat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com. You ready? Go. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is coming to Paramount+. Plus. Hang on! It's off the charts spectacular. Go, go, go! Tom Cruise has outdone himself. The world's coming after you. Stay out of my way. Prepare for one of the best action movies ever made. This is getting exciting. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Streaming January 25th on Paramount+. Plus. Rated PG-13. Some material may be inappropriate for children under 13.